Hello, hello, welcome to the Pav Show. Today, my guest is Shivank Tafali. Shivank is a multi-channel marketer and, passion and passionate about helping people achieve a fact-based worldview. He strives to bring people together through travel, entrepreneurship, and an attitude of gratitude. Welcome, Shiv. Thanks, PV. Glad to be here. Yes, I think it's important to note that Shiv is also one of my good friends. And we're about to have a dope conversation. <laughs> Shiv, I wanted to have you on the show to discuss inner peace and abundance mindset. Yes. Um, this was a topic that you suggested. So I'd like to actually hear about what does inner peace mean to you? Oh, what a way to start off the, the conversation. Um, I think Just inner peace. You on the spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, to me lately, inner peace means um being able to sit with my own thoughts and emotions without feeling a sense of restlessness or anxiety like just being able to acknowledge the thoughts that come up um, and allow them to pass without a sense of like attachment on like any particular thought like um and get in, caught up in that spiral you know so i think it's really being able to um sit in that stillness and then also related to that is like being able to live abundantly and kind of have an elevated sense of uh, consciousness uh, and not get too caught up in like the frenzy of the day. Like I'm, I live in New York city. So it's like, I'm like getting on the subway and zipping all over the city. It can be a lot, you know? So it's like starting my day with that sense of stillness really helps me get a sense of like feeling grounded and feeling like, um, you know, rem remaining in my, uh, my core being like my core values, for example, like, which are love, peace, gratitude, compassion, and community, which we, you know, identified at, at Third Nature Summer Camp. So I feel like um, being at inner peace means also living in according to those values, you know, being able to live those out every day through my actions, through my words and thoughts. And did you always have this mindset or was this a transformation that you went through? The latter, yeah. I don't think I always uh, embodied that mindset and it probably... Um, in my more like recent, like past five years, I've started to live more consciously, like after I moved to the US and probably discovered uh, Third Nature, like formerly Startup Island, like that's when I started to meet people who are also on that same wavelength, mm -hmm. who are looking to not only become the best version of themselves, like um, personally and professionally, but also spiritually. And like, um, when I started discovering mindfulness and meditation, like I think that's what showed me that there's um it unlocked me to this whole possibility of like of inner peace and stillness um and having this like calm energy um that really allows you to tackle whatever issues come your way you know so this is so relatable because i also recently started getting into mindfulness i suppose although i'm not sure how i feel about that because it's not mindfulness at all it's like mind nothingness Oh, um, damn, you just flipped it. <laughs> uh, and just like you, I had a lot of thoughts that were constantly running around and I was getting lost in them. I was getting lost yeah. in the stories of my mind. In fact, I didn't even realize what a story was. As far as I was concerned, the stories I was making up was fact. <laughs> mm. And that's, it colored my worldview. Um, and I didn't realize that everything that I was seeing and how I was reacting was based off of all of the stuff that I was making up in my head. Sometimes I still see it happen. It doesn't happen often. Uh, but sometimes if there's, especially when there's an emotion attached to the thought, it'll start feeling itself be like, oh, well, this person said this and that person said that. And like, if they say that again to me, then I'm going to react like this. And <laughs> and then note to notice this actually just happened to me last week and to notice it and realize pv you're actually making stuff up <laughs> you don't even know what the next interaction is going to be like calm down yep 100 percent. and like it's interesting when you uh track like the root of the storyline is never something that's like super substantial anyways it's always like a little seed that we just keep watering and watering and like it becomes this whole forest and and then that becomes like we confuse that for for reality mm. um so it's interesting like going back to the root and then realizing like even acknowledging the fact that it's a story 
um, can help us kind of separate that from like what's actually happening. That's not easy either, because when I get to the root of it, it turns out, oh, whoopsie daisies, that's my ego. And it doesn't mm. want to let go. It's like gum, getting gum in your hair. It's just all up sticky in there. Yeah, <laughs> and then you yeah. have to just chop it off. That's the only way. Yeah. And once we have a story that feeds that ego, right, in, um, in whatever way, then we also look for we get confirmation bias where we're looking for like more evidence to to kind of reinforce that story that we've already made up right so it can be hard whenever there's like evidence that's like counter to that story then we kind of brush it off like oh like that's not you know um then we like incorporate like that less and we're more open to like the facts that are just reinforcing that same storyline but once that consciousness expands and it realizes that like, oh, okay, this is going on, there's no going back. In fact, then it keeps, it keeps expanding. And these kinds of things, like getting lost in the storyline of my thoughts happens less and less and almost rarely at this point. So, and, it's, and when it does happen, it's especially noticeable. Interesting. Uh, and do you feel like that's, you've developed that skill through like, just hours and hours of practice and just showing up consistently to meditate and and kind of creating that space where you're like you you can see the difference tangibly in how you're able to like catch these storylines now versus like maybe a couple years ago oh yes for sure this is first of all i'm supposed to be interviewing you (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yes meditation really changed everything because i took the time to sit down every single day and pay attention to my thoughts. And when you clear up those thoughts- It's so simple, and, but it's huge at the same time. It's so, yes, you're absolutely right. It's so simple and huge at the same time because like it's an immediately accessible tool to mm-hmm. just sit and breathe. Pay attention to your breath, pay attention to what's coming up. Um, and at first I used to be like, ah, oh, baby, just stop thinking, just stop thinking. And in trying to focus on that, I would think more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the resistance that creates more thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, it came to a point where I was like, okay, wait, pay attention to the thoughts that are coming up. When I started paying attention to them, I started resolving the emotion that was attached to them. Uh, and then ultimately cleared my mind and behind those thoughts. I didn't realize was like connection to source. Mm -hmm. The first time I start, like I was able to completely clear my mind and, you know, you and I have had these conversations about transcendental meditation. I didn't know what that was at the time. And to see light inside, I'm like, Oh shit. What? (laughs) Yeah. Those that the visualization, right? Yeah. Yeah. When did this, um, transformation happened for you like what created this shift um i think just in the past few years like with the pandemic and moving from boston to new york there's been like even changes uh, professionally like i've changed jobs like there's been a lot of just change in general like change is the only constant you know um and like having to having like living in the u.s i'm already not fully rooted here like i'm kind of building my life here but my roots are also like back in Belgium so it's it's kind of like you're always um trying to find a sense of home right in a place that you didn't grow up in Mm. and that's why I feel like mindfulness and and meditation has helped in terms of um accepting my circumstances for what they are like being in the present moment and then appreciating all the opportunities that I have today to continue like building my life here um So I think that's definitely been transformative in terms of um, being less reactive, being more um, present um, and more compassionate as well to myself and others. You bring up, I think, a really insightful point that that's just it. We react to a lot of the stressors around us. Yeah. Um, And sure, we can't necessarily control all of our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we react to them. 100%. Yeah. Like, even if we're in, like, the most uh, stimulating environments, like cities like Boston and New York, we can still choose 
um, our internal state of being, right? And then when we have the opportunity to like go out to change our external environment, like to go on retreats where we're surrounded by nature and a lake and stars, like that's also a very welcome change of scenery where we have we don't have to try as hard to be at peace internally because we're already in such peaceful surroundings. But like we might not have that in an everyday situation. So it's like, how do you bring that same sense of peace into your daily life, you know, in your like urban environments and things like that? Did you always value peace? Maybe, but I feel like I've definitely been more vocal about peace as something I value recently. Um, but I've always been kind of like, I think I've sort of had like a Zen-like quality for a while, like maybe even since childhood. Um, like, I don't think I was ever like super, um, you know, like overly anxious or, or anything like that. But I think it's definitely something I've started to value more um, as I've gotten older and in my mid twenties now. I asked because what a great answer, answer though, because you said maybe. Yeah, because I don't know, it, it could be, right? Like, yeah. I don't know for sure whether or not, maybe subconsciously, like I was a peaceful kid, you know? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Because I feel that I recently started valuing peace. Um, and I don't know if I've always valued it. I do know that I've always, for the most of my life, I experienced chaos. In fact, I used to live in this very peaceful um area in Florida before I moved to Boston and you could see the stars every night and hear birds and owls it was very peaceful but I only experienced chaos and it wasn't until I moved to the city where you know it there's a lot of stimulation going on that I started valuing peace it was almost as if I had to get to that brink <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Like you found stillness within so much chaos. Like that's, you know, very admirable. How you've, like your journey is also really cruel. How you've, um, you know, gained the sense of elevated uh, self-awareness and um, it's just like off the charts. But Shiv, wait, wait. It all also seems like because of like all of your travel and you trying to figure out where you belong, there's, that's also where peace started being it fl started flourishing mm -hmm. it's like kind of like a really lotus lovely. it lotus flowers bloom in really mucky muddy waters that like that's like the the duality yeah. of life like that's how nature balances itself right yeah like the the darkest hours right before dawn right like that's what the Paulo Coelho says in the alchemist yeah um, I think when you mentioned my travels, like that reminded me of uh, my year abroad in Asia. Like I had kind of left my community in Boston and gone to Hong Kong for a semester to pretty much started from scratch there and then moved to Singapore for six months and then started from scratch there again. And it's very unsettling at first to like uproot yourself and have to start over, um, especially trying to find a sense of belonging in a city where you don't know anyone at first and you're, everything is kind of new and uncertain. Um, and you just take the leap anyways. And I think those travel experiences taught me a lot about myself. Like I went on a solo trip to Japan and kind of even just walking through the forest in Kyoto, like on my own with like my camera and just being so observant, you know, I feel like I was observing not only my surroundings, but I was also very observant of the thoughts that were coming up. So it almost felt like that was meditation, like traveling alone and just experiencing I felt the most present probably on that trip than I've ever felt before um so that was super eye-opening you're making me realize you're never by yourself because you're always with yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that um so in all of this how did you cultivate abundance mindset I suppose let's start with what does abundance mindset mean to you yeah, so I would say I would the way I define abundance is also by saying that it's like the opposite of scarcity, like it's the opposite of feeling like I don't have enough, you know, like I'm not good enough or I need to work towards XYZ goals to, val to feel a sense of validation. So abundance is like 
um, that we have everything we need right now for a life of fulfillment and success. Like everything I desire is already within me, you know, like peace, happiness, joy. Um, it starts with the sense of gratitude, you know, being grateful for what you have today doesn't mean you have to be complacent. Like you can still strive to achieve more. Um, but it's really looking at looking within and being grateful for like the opportunities you've had so far, um, like great gratitude for like the education that I've received and the kind of my, my mental health, emotional health, my friendships, love, like all of that kind of just having that sense of abundance and like really like really stepping into that sense of um, feeling like you have more than you need you know um and then i also like when i feel abundance i also feel a sense of like giving back right to the community that i'm that i'm a part of and that kind of has a ripple effect and helps people like i want to share the wealth you know like spread the abundance not just like not just keep it all for myself like what's the point of that yeah so two things come up for me one is that UCLA did a research study showing that gratitude is the most powerful drug known to man. That oh, every right. time we express gratitude, both dopamine and serotonin are released in our brain at the same millisecond. And, that, and uh, is serotonin the stress hormone? Uh, no, it's uh, happiness. So, okay, dopamine and serotonin? Yeah. Interesting. And so... It's yeah, we have like a whole little pharmacy in our brain. And <laughs> gratitude is like the first step. In fact, I started doing gratitude journaling every morning and then uh, every night ending with gratitude for everything that I have. And all of a sudden I started becoming happier and happier. <laughs> Whereas like, I, I didn't think that's where that would lead. Um, no, well, definitely. I'm sorry. I've, I've, I've kind of experienced the same, like when I used to start my days by writing down like three things I'm grateful for, or even um, like when I watch, listen to Sadhguru, like he'll say like, um, he'll remind us that we should be grateful that we're alive, you know, like just in the morning, like, oh, like this is, this is still working. Like, yeah. Um, uh, even starting my day with saying like grateful to be alive today, like that, that, that sense of um, gratitude just shifts your approach to the day, you know, um, instead of focusing on issues or, or like anything, there's so much in the world that's going on right now. It's easy to feel like bogged down or, or pessimistic, but even starting from within that sense of gratitude, I feel like we're doing our part in helping the universe heal, you know? I love that because yeah. just as hurt people hurt people, healed people heal people. Mm. Um, and the other thing that came up for me was you say that like yes once we start having that abundance mindset then we want to share it with others because like our cup runneth over in fact there's extra in the saucer underneath that you can hand to people and even share some from your brimming cup yeah. um, I do find that we as people we want to help others uh, but I also find that a lot of us are constantly trying to help others without taking care of ourselves. And then right. that's like a cup with holes in it. You're constantly being drained. And then that energy transfers to the other, to other people and everything else around you as well. So it's really mm -hmm. important to fill up and have that abundance mindset yourself before giving, because otherwise it's like your, your bank account essentially will go into a negative balance because you're just constantly giving to other people. Right. I 100% agree. Like in college, I feel like I tried to get super involved on campus, like participate in all these student organizations on top of like learning Mandarin or like, and taking my business classes and trying to like hang out with friends and just like also enjoy whatever, everything college has to offer. And I feel like I didn't focus on filling my own cup. Like I feel I was so focused on like, building relationships or like helping others um, and like actually trying to affect lives where I realized that if you're drained yourself and like, or you're burned out, you're not even in a position to help others effectively. You know, you're almost kind of like um, 
depleting your own ability to to make an impact and that's that shift was definitely important in realizing like you have to put on your oxygen mask first you know before you put it on for others that's so relatable because i was the same way i was just like i think i was in denial it's like i'm a good person so i'm gonna try to help other people um and it was just really for me that was like a distraction from my own thoughts that were going on like if I were, I was left alone to my own thoughts instead of focusing on others, then that would mean I would have to focus on myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that yeah. wasn't easy because just to tie back to what we were talking about before, like those stories that I was telling myself, that would mean that I would have to follow those threads down to my ego and go through the process of letting it go, <laughs> which it's not easy. Yeah, and it is a process. <laughs> it's a process uh, how do you um cultivate abundance in your life uh so this month actually i was doing a meditation series by deepak chopra on abundance consciousness um my cousin krishna recommended it to me like right after um our summer camp trip and so i would start each day with um one of his sessions and so that really helped in terms of like getting a centering thought about living my life abundantly and, um, you know, going within. And then he would have a Sanskrit mantra for each each day. And so when my thoughts would would drift, I would be able to like repeat the mantra. And that was my way of like coming back to the centering thought um, or coming back to my breath. So I feel like that's definitely been influential this month in terms of cultivating a sense of abundance. and then also um, writing down things I'm grateful for. And even just um, my morning, like uh, I have some, I do like morning prayers as well. So I'll, I'll end my prayer with like, I'll just like mentally, I'll, I'll think of things I'm grateful for. And, but I'll start by saying like, I'm grateful to be alive today. And then I'll follow it up with like other things I'm grateful for. Like maybe that happened more recently, you know, um, so that's kind of how I have my mornings, you know? So I think that sets the tone for the rest of the day. I love that. Yeah, yeah, same. I have also a morning routine where I do gratitude journaling. So I start off with what I'm grateful for, what I look forward to, um, yeah. what can I do to get me closer to my goals? What's the most important thing for me to do? And then an I am statement, an affirmation statement, because anything that comes after those two words, you become. Yes, I was going to mention, I'm glad you brought up the affirmations, because I definitely leaned on those, um, you know, in the past few years, and they're very powerful, like just saying like, I am, and then whatever you choose to say after that, like, you really can identify that with that, you know. Um, So those are like, Again, another simple tool, like just writing down I am statements, but like with enough consistency and and just showing up and and putting that pen to paper uh, can make a difference, you know, like internally as well. Like you just you just start to believe what you actually wrote down, yes. even if it's aspirational. Right. right. It might not even be 100 percent true. Like you, you might write I am at peace. And but you might it might be when you're like stressed about something, but then you actually believe what you just wrote down, you know? Yeah, and we don't realize how powerful that is. Um, That so often I hear I am statements like, I am angry, I am sad. Hmm. Like, are you? (laughs) Or do you feel anger and do you feel sadness? Yeah, and yeah. that's that was the dialogue I had to start with myself actually. That like it's I was like, like I, I have am sadness. depressed. Yeah, I have anger. Yeah, it's yeah. like emo- are, do you become an emotion or do you just feel it? Well, I mean, like you can become the emotion if that's what you're telling yourself, right? Right. That but like you don't, you, you don't have to become an emotion, right? If you separate the I am from like I feel. Yeah. So it's emotions like anger or sadness that you don't need to. You don't necessarily have to get wrapped up in it, like you said. Right. And to choose what I say carefully, like, no, I am peace. Yeah. Yeah. I am flow. And it changes everything. Because you start to identify with it. Like, if you're going to identify with anything, like, 
that's the power of being a human being. Mm -hmm. I think that reminds me of something uh, Dalton, our good friend, said at camp. He was like, I am, I am love. Like he's, he's in love, like not just in a, the traditional sense, but like just he embodies that completely. Right. Yes. I genuinely believe that like we are all love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Peter Crone says that, you know, I am, I'm in love. Like here's love and I'm in it. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That like, it, it's not about being in love with someone else. It's about just being love itself. Mm -hmm. Another thing, another tool that I use in order to cultivate abundance is a weekly thing where I'll write down my three wins that I had throughout the week yep. and then three lessons that I've learned and then how I'll improve moving forward. Because so often uh, I used to only focus on like all the things that went wrong in my life and not any of the things that were going right. Um, and then when I started writing down my weekly wins, it's like, they're not these wins like, oh, I made tons of money or, uh, you know, oh, I got this opportunity. My weekly wins actually end up being, oh, I had this insightful conversation. Oh, I yeah. was at peace yeah. during this moment where a past me would have been anxious, would have felt anxious. <laughs> You see, I'm already using these I am. <laughs> and you call yourself right there in real time. Real time. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, I like that you do that because um, I've recently started writing in my journal, like I'll do a weekend recap slash weekend review where I'll just kind of write down like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like what I did, who I spent it with, you know, um, where I went, like, because we actually do, I was, I actually surprised myself, like how much, um, how I spend my time, like how much abundance there was, you know, in a, in even like any given weekend. Um, and I feel like that's similar to like how you do your, right, even writing the small wins. Like I reflect on reflecting on a weekend for me would be like, Oh, I had, I ate this meal like peacefully, or I was, I was super present with this specific, um, meal that I cooked for myself and I didn't have any screens in front of me, you know, like, just I allowed myself to like sit with the food and my thoughts and um, moments like that, like you just learn to appreciate, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because life is magical and we don't need all these things in order to feel the magic. In fact, when you look around, there's something very mysterious going on here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. sometimes I just touch water and I'm like whoa <laughs> yeah yeah for me that's whenever I like will pass by like a creek when I hear like water going downstream and just like just like listening to that it's like uh it's like an orchestra you know like just nature sounds you know being out in nature is definitely um a part of like the abundance mindset I think like whenever you have the opportunity to like go out and just be around trees or anything like that like um, and if sometimes if I'm, uh, like inside my apartment, then I might opt for a David Attenborough documentary, you know, to feel that sense of expansiveness or, cause I think watching footage of nature even has an effect on our minds mm -hmm. in terms of like zooming out and like thinking about our planet as a whole, you know? Right. Cause it's like, we're little batteries. Like we are nature. We are nature. That's why we're always so called to it yeah yeah like exactly like we are not we're not like part of nature you know like we are nature right yeah. right and i said we're little batteries because like things like grounding for example that recharges us like just because we can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist and really if you pay attention you can see it <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm sure you see it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i see all the things that i just want to see really <laughs> the mind is a powerful place it is indeed and uh i feel like all the practices and, and rituals we, we've talked about so far 
like our like our tools that we can use to like harness the the immense power of our minds you know like because if if we don't really rein it in then it's gonna like go in all sorts of directions right yeah so it's kind of like being able to uh take that incredible like mind power but channel it in like ways that actually serve us because it's it's still wired in a way that like um served us back in like hunter gatherer era you know like it's still super reactive for certain things but like there's no bear about to attack us so we don't have to be so reactive anymore mm -hmm. so it's kind of like we're, we're trying to rewire it according to like how humans have evolved and how we how we live in today's day and age um so i feel like all these tools are kind of helping us unlearn some of the things that you know as humans we've, we've already come built with and then relearn what it's like to live more, you know, peacefully and um, more proactively. I love that you said rewiring because the fact of the matter is we actually have that choice to consciously rewire our, our brains, our system. Right. Yeah. Like big new neural connections, right? And like, we might not sit down to meditate today and be like, all right, today I'm going to make five new neural connections, but it happens over time, right? With enough intention and like, and I think part of it is like, um, you probably don't have to focus on the benefits you're gonna get from meditation. It's like, you don't work out expecting results immediately. So uh, people shouldn't expect results immediately from meditation either, you know? But it's like, um, you take away the expectations, but you, you continue to show up and then you might feel the benefits in the long-term anyways. Right. And that's also like falling in love. Like it doesn't just, you can't really, you can't necessarily measure it. It takes the amount of time that it needs to take. Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't just happen like, oh, you meet someone and just like, that's it. <laughs> it's like that builds over time. And like, next thing you know, it's years later and you're like, hmm, shit, I'm in love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it needs to be nurtured, right? Um, and then like you, you realize that like probably way after, uh, like after it's already been building up, you know, you only realize it once you're in it, you don't realize it like right before you're about to, it's about to happen, you know? Yeah. yeah. Shiv, this like, was such an amazing conversation. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything you would like to leave the listeners off with? Oh, um, I would say don't be afraid to sit with your thoughts and um, solitude can be empowering uh, when it's a choice and not a circumstance. Um, and I would say that everyone has the potential within themselves to be at peace. You know, like there's not, it's not like me and you are better equipped to be peaceful people. Like everyone has that with those tools within them to, to find that sense of inner um, inner peace whenever they need to access it no matter what's going on in their lives I love that Shiv yeah. if more people want to find out about what you're doing where can they find you uh, they can find me uh, on my medium blog um, so it'll be like medium.shivanktaksali.com or um, they can find me on Instagram at shivanktaksali um, or they can find me on a summer camp retreat um, some, <laughs> some, <laughs> at some point that's probably <laughs> The, the likeliest place to find me in real life you know <laughs> i love that all right well thank you so much for coming on my show thank you so much pb this was great